Hey everybody, welcome back to Texas 911. This channel is going to be all about everything dealing with 911. And if you're watching this, then you probably have some kind of inkling of being a 911 dispatcher. So thank you very much for tuning in. Please make sure you subscribe because over the next month, I'm going to be doing a series of videos dealing with how to become a 911 dispatcher. But before we get into all that, I want to make sure that you have really thought this through on what you want to do and how you want to do it. And if this is even the job for you, because honestly, this job is not for everybody. But I am a firm believer that if you set your mind to something, you can do it. So being a 911 dispatcher is a very, very stressful job. It's a job that will take you away at nights. It's a job that will put gray hair <laughs> on your head, in your beard if you're a guy like me. Um, when I first started being a 911 dispatcher 16 or so years ago, um, I had just started going gray. And uh, my beard was still fully brown. And I just had just a little bit of, of gray on my head. Pardon my hairdo. But anyways... So this job is very, very stressful, um, and it can be, I mean, you never really know what your call is going to be until you actually answer that call. It could be anything from some cows that are loose to somebody that's driving like a bat out of hell, um, swerving in and out of traffic, going head on into traffic, whatever, and it can be anywhere up from that all the way up the spectrum to a domestic disturbance, which is honestly one of the most dangerous uh, types of calls that law enforcement responds to. Um, it has the most mort mortality rate. It has the most officer-involved shootings in it, and it, it, it's just a very dangerous type of call. Uh, but it can be anywhere in between there. And being on the radio side, uh, being on the 911 dispatch side, so first off, you receive the call from the caller, and they're frantic. You know, most of the time when people call 911, it's their most stressful time of their life. It's the most um, disastrous time of their life, and they're calling you for help. It's your job to make sure that you get all the information that you can. It, but on the same side of that... If you don't get that information, you put officers' lives at risk, and you put firefighters' lives at risk, and EMS lives at risk, and any first responder, their lives are at risk if you don't do your job to the fullest potential. So there's a lot of stress and a lot of responsibility that are on your shoulders to get that information and get it quickly and get it out there. Now, that's not just to say about you know the job, the stresses of the job. That's kind of a given. Uh, if you know anything about what it is to be a 911 dispatcher, you know, it's, it's not, it's not like the, the shows that you see, like 911 that's on TV now, or there, you know, you know, there's a couple, uh, 911 shows that actually, um, follow some dispatchers, uh, through a storyline throughout the hour. And it kind of gives you a little bit more information about it, about what they go on with, but it doesn't show everything and it doesn't show the extreme lulls in between calls, if there is any, um, you know, depending on the agency that you work for, you could be working from, you know, from the time that you clock in to the time you clock out. It could be, you know, pedal to the metal. Um, or you could work at a small agency where you might have one or two calls. But nonetheless, as a 911 dispatcher, there has to be somebody there 24 7 because that is the job. So, going through all these. All these different types of calls and any potential stressor that you have, there's going to be some blowback in your family life. There's going to be times where you're not going to be able to go to parties or you're not going to be able to go to birthday parties or you're not going to be able to go out with your friends or you're going to miss holidays or first words or first steps of your baby. There, you know, Things like baseball games and... Um, you know, all, all kinds of things. You might as well kiss your social life goodbye because 95% of the time, your friends that you have now, they may not be your friends a year from now 
because of the way that you work as a 911 dispatcher or any first responder for that matter. You know, when you first start out, more than likely you're going to be on nights. You're going to be on deep nights, working overnight shifts. That means that you're going to sleep during the day and you're also going to work weekends. So that means that Friday and Saturday night when you used to go out with friends and you used to go drinking to the bars or, or you know just to the movies or whatever, that's not going to happen anymore because you're going to be working. And you have to get used to that really fast saying, I'm sorry guys, I have to work. And sooner or later, those friends are going to stop calling you and saying, hey, you want to go out because you've told them those too many times. And... Because you're working nights and you're working weekends, you're going to have those off days in the middle of the week, and you're just not going to be able to maintain that relationship. Um, of course, you're going to make new friends. You're going to make friends you know, within your agency, uh, officers that you work with, other 911 dispatchers, um, other people that work in your area that are first responders and that work the same shifts as you, yeah, you'll start hanging out more. So, yeah, you'll probably get more friends. But I just want you to make sure that you are fully aware that the friends that you have now might not be the friends you have a year from now. So make sure you take you take that into consideration. Um, and I'm not saying this is going to happen. You know, if you work in your friendship and you go out with them and they're understandable, then you, and if they are really good friends, they'll probably they'll remain your friends, but you just won't do as much stuff with them. As a 911 dispatcher, it is a 24/7 thing. Somebody has to be there to answer that 911 call that comes in anytime, day or night. You're going to be working evening shifts, you're going to be working morning shifts, you're going to be working night shifts, you're going to be working weekends, you're going to be working holidays, you're going to be working birthdays and and all that stuff. You have to be able to work it. You have to be able to work any shift that's required of you, any day that's required of you, any holiday that's required of you, any ball game that you're going to miss, you're going to have to work it. It's just the way that it is. Most agencies will have like an on-call person or, you know, if you work this shift you're prob- you, and somebody calls in on the other shift, you might get called in. You might have to stay late. Um, you know, you can work anywhere between eight-hour shift to a sixteen-hour shift. You just don't know because that coverage has to be maintained. The reasoning behind potentially working a lot of overtime, because honestly, any first responder job, there's going to be a lot of overtime that you work, and unfortunately, that's just the way that it is. I would venture to guess that probably 95 or more agencies out there um, that answer 911 calls are short-staffed. I would even venture to say it's even more than that. Maybe even 98%. You know, I've worked at my current agency now since uh, 2015. When I first started, I was the last person hired, and... We maintained the crew that we had for a good two and a half to three years. But since then, it has been a nonstop revolving door with at least one person. We've been down at least one person since about 2018 or so. And, you know, there's times that I'll have, you know, that I'll work extra shifts. There's times that I'll have to you know, go in and work for somebody else uh, because they need a day off. You know, everybody has to have a day off, so people have to cover for them. It's just the way that it is. So make sure that this is actually something you are willing to do before you go on and say, I want to apply for this position. I want to work this position. Make sure that you're willing to make the sacrifice that you're going to have to do in order to do this career. And that's, that's even before all the training and stuff. And we'll get that in, into that in future videos. But the next thing, uh, in the next video, we're going to be talking about how to find a 911 job. Um, and there's several ways that you can do that. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Just click on the little bell icon down the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, click on that uh, link, 
and click on the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so you don't miss any of the videos. Now, I think at least for the first month or two, I'm going to be doing at least two videos a week. I'm going to be releasing on Mondays and Thursdays. Um, after that, I might go down to just one a week, but I would like to stick to the two if all possible. And if you out there that are watching this video show me that this is something that you would like, then I will continue to do the two videos a week. Uh, please, you know, show me in the share, show me in the likes, uh, and, sub and subscribers. Um, show these to people that uh, potentially might be a 911 dispatcher in the near future, or that have just become a 911 dispatcher. After this month, after this initial series, I'm going to be talking about tips and tricks about being a 911 dispatcher, uh, things you can do, different trainings um, with things that I've gone through. I'm going to have handouts in some of these uh, descriptions and these videos I'm going to have uh, when I'm talking about different things. I'm making handouts for me you can download and use in your everyday life uh, as a 911 dispatcher. So thank you very much for tuning in. Please make sure you that you subscribe. And until then, y'all, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe out there.